Question 1. Which two topics should be covered in a site induction? Give two answers. A. Holiday entitlement. B. Local amenities. C. Local transportation links. D. Site emergency procedures. E. Site rules. The correct answer is D and E. Question 2. During the site induction you do not understand something the presenter says. What should you do? Give one answer. A. Ask the presenter to explain it again. B. Attend another site induction. C. Guess what the presenter was saying. D. Wait until the end and ask someone else to explain. The correct answer is A. Question 3. You are injured in an accident at work. When should you report it? Give one answer. A. At the end of the day, before you go home. B. Immediately, or as soon as possible. C. Only if you have to take time off work. D. The next day before you start work. The correct answer is B. Question 4. Why should you report an accident? Give one answer. A. It helps the site find out who caused it. B. It is a legal requirement. C. So that everyone can find out what happened. D. So that your company will be held responsible. The correct answer is B. Question 5. Who must you report a serious accident to? Give one answer. A. Site security. B. The ambulance service. C. The police service. D. Your employer. The correct answer is D. Question 6. Which two of the following items should be recorded in the accident book? Give two answers. A. Date of the accident. B. Injury sustained. C. Location of the hospital. D. National insurance number. E. Telephone number. The correct answer is A and B. Question 7. Which of the following is the least important reason for recording all accidents? Give one answer. A. Details have to be entered in the accident book. B. It might stop them happening again. C. Some accidents have to be reported to the Health and Safety Executive, HSE. D. To find out who is to blame and make sure they are prosecuted. The correct answer is D. Question 8. Someone working in a deep inspection chamber has collapsed. What should you do first? Give one answer. A. Ask someone to find your supervisor while you try to rescue the worker. B. Climb into the inspection chamber and give first aid treatment. C. Get someone to lower you into the inspection chamber on a rope. D. Raise the alarm and stay by the inspection chamber, but do not enter. The correct answer is D. Play the power and call for help. C. Phone the electricity company. D. Pull them away from the cable. The correct answer is B. Question 10. Which of the following statements about personal protective equipment, PPE, is not true? Give one answer. A. You must pay for any damage or loss. B. You must report any damage or loss to your supervisor. C. You must store it correctly when you are not using it. D. You must use it as instructed. The correct answer is A. Question 11. How should a safety helmet be worn to get maximum protection from it? Give one answer. A. B. C. D. The correct answer is D. Question 12. If you need to wear a full body harness and you have not used one before, what should you do? Give one answer. A. 
Ask for expert advice and training. B. Ask someone wearing a harness to show you what to do. C. Read the manufacturer's instruction book. D. Try to work it out for yourself. The correct answer is A. Question 13. Which one of the following is true of a spill on site, involving just one liter of oil? Give one answer. A. It could cause serious air pollution. B. It is too small to cause a problem. C. It will contaminate the ground. D. The main problem is that oil is expensive. The correct answer is C. Question 14. Which three statements are reasons why saving energy is important? Give three answers. A. It helps energy companies to charge more for their services. B. It helps to increase energy use on other sites. C. It helps to reduce fuel and energy bills on site. The correct answer is C, D, and E. Question 15. What are the two most important reasons why waste should be segregated on site? Give two answers. A. It is generally more cost effective to dispose of segregated waste. B. So the client can check what is being thrown away. C. So the wastes can be used or recycled more easily. D. The waste will take up less room in a skip. E. To make sure the laborer has enough work to do. The correct answer is A and C. Question 16. Which of the following activities does not create harmful silica dust? Give one answer. A. Breaking up concrete floors and screeds. B. Chasing out walls and mortar joints or sweeping up rubble. C. Cutting curbs, stone, paving slabs, bricks, and blocks. D. Sawing timber or plywood. The correct answer is D. Question 17. What is the main risk to this worker, wearing only these items of personal protective equipment, PPE? Give one answer. A. Back injury, from poor posture. B. Breathing in harmful dust. C. Goggles misting up, limiting vision. D. Not being able to hear colleagues. The correct answer is B. Question 18. The chances of suffering from lung cancer are increased by what? Give one answer. A. Breathing in dust. B. Exposure to steam. C. Exposure to sunlight. D. Vibration from power tools. The correct answer is A. Question 19. How should contaminated respiratory protective equipment RPE, be considered when being disposed of? Give one answer. A. As compostable wastes. B. As hazardous waste. C. As normal waste products. D. As recyclable materials. The correct answer is B. Question 20. What health problem can be caused by using handheld vibrating tools? Give one answer. A. An itchy skin irritation, like dermatitis, affecting your hands. B. Blisters on your fingers and hands. C. Damage to the blood vessels in your fingers and hands. D. Skin cancer on your hands and arms. The correct answer is C. Question 21. What should you do if someone near you is using noisy equipment and you have no hearing protection? Give one answer. A. Ask them to stop what they are doing, as it is disrupting other workers on site. B. Carry on with your work, as you are not the person using the noisy equipment. C. Leave the area until you have the correct personal protective equipment, PPE. D. Speak to the other person's supervisor to stop them making the noise. The correct answer is C. Question 22. 
if you suspect someone at work has been drinking alcohol, what should you do? Give one answer. A. Ask them to stay away for an hour and then go back to work. B. Get them to drink plenty of strong coffee before they go back to work. C. Get them to eat and drink something, wait 30 minutes and then go back to work. D. Report the situation to your supervisor, as they may be unsafe to work. The correct answer is D. Question 23. What are the minimum facilities that must be provided on site for washing your hands? Give one answer. A. A cold water stand pipe and paper towels. B. A water container, bowl, and paper towels. C. Hot and cold water. Soap, and a way to dry your hands. D. There is no need to provide washing facilities. The correct answer is C. Question 24. Prolonged exposure to sunlight could cause what? Give one answer. A. Abrasions. B. Burns. C. Dental issues. D. Hair loss. The correct answer is B. Question 25. Select the two images in which the worker is correctly protecting themselves from possible cuts or abrasions. Give two answers. A. B. C. D. E. The correct answer is B and C. Question 26. Which one of the following is true of the symptoms of stress? Give one answer. A. They always develop very quickly. B. They are the same for everybody. C. They can be different for each individual. D. They take a while to develop. The correct answer is C. Question 27. M. I. N. D. Is a charity that does what? Give one answer. A. Controls and monitors health and safety in the workplace. B provides advice and support to empower anyone experiencing a mental health problem. C. Provides housing for retired construction workers. D. Represents people who are very intelligent and want to improve their IQ. The correct answer is B. Question 28. A worker creates offcuts on site. Who is responsible for clearing them away? Give one answer. The foreman. B. The site manager. C. The supervisor. D. The worker. The correct answer is D. Question 29. A work task results in cables from power tools running across a walkway. What action should be taken? Give one answer. A. Consider using cordless tools, or running the cables at high level. B. Put up signs that the fire escape is out of order temporarily. C. Think about cancelling the job because it is too dangerous. D. While working, look out for anyone approaching to warn them. The correct answer is A. Question 30. What is the best way for a worker to avoid becoming stressed because of an overload of work? Give one answer. A. Make sure they take medication before going to work. B. Only do what is manageable because someone else will pick up the extra. C. Put up with the extra work but make sure overtime is paid. D. Speak openly and regularly with their manager or employer about workloads. The correct answer is D. Question 31. If a worker confides in a colleague that they have suffered from a mental health issue, what should the colleague do? Give one answer. A. Do their work for them because they might not be able to cope. B. Inform the site supervisor and first aider. C. Let other colleagues know, so they can avoid working with them. D. Treat them as they would any other work colleague. The correct answer is D. Question 32. 
What are two risks of carrying a load in cold, damp conditions? Give two answers. A. The load will be easier to carry. B. The load will feel lighter due to the cold conditions. C. The route you take could be slippery. D. You will need to work more quickly to warm up. E. Your ability to carry the load safely will be reduced. The correct answer is C and E. Question 33. You need to move a load that might be too heavy for you. What three methods could you use? Give three answers. A. Ask someone to help you. B. Divide the load into smaller loads if possible. C. Drag the load to avoid lifting it. D. Test the load's weight by picking it up for a short time. E. Use an aid, such as a trolley or wheelbarrow. The correct answer is A, B, and E. Question 34. If you need to move a load that is heavier on one side than the other, how should you pick it up? Give one answer. A. Lift the heavy side away from you. B. With the heavy side on your strong arm. C. With the heavy side on your weak arm. D. With the heavy side towards you. The correct answer is D. Question 35. A wheel comes off a trolley you are using to move a heavy load a long distance. What should you do? Give one answer. A. Ask someone to help you pull the trolley for the rest of the journey. B. Carry the load for the rest of the journey. C. Drag the trolley on your own for the rest of the journey. D. Find another way to move the load and complete the journey. The correct answer is D. Question 36. Which three of the following should be labeled with this sign? Give three answers. A. Any product containing asbestos. B. Asbestos waste. C. Plasterboard waste. D. Raw asbestos. E. Recyclable waste. The correct answer is A, B, and D. Question 37. Why is it considered poor practice to store batteries loose in a tool bag? Give one answer. A. If the terminals short out, they could cause a fire. B. The tool bag will be heavy and could damage your bag. C. They give off a poisonous gas in a confined space. D. You might forget to charge them. The correct answer is A. Question 38. What should you do if the guard is missing from a power tool? Give one answer. A. Do not use the tool until a proper guard has been fitted. B. Try to make another guard. C. Use the tool but try to work quickly. D. Use the tool but work carefully and slowly. Or is A. Question 39. Why should a residual current device, RCD, be used with 230 volt tools? Give one answer. A. It lowers the voltage automatically. B. It makes the tool run at a safe speed. C. It quickly cuts off the power if there is a fault. D. It saves energy and lowers costs. The correct answer is C. Question 40. What should you do if the head on your hammer becomes loose? Give one answer. A. Find another heavy tool to use instead of the hammer. B. Keep using it but be aware that the head could come off at any time. C. Stop work and get the hammer repaired or replaced. D. Tell the other people near you to keep out of the way. The correct answer is C. Question 41. What should you do if you need to walk past someone operating a mobile crane? Give one answer. A. Guess what the crane operator will do next and squeeze past. B. Run to get past the crane quickly. C. 
Take another route so that you stay clear of the crane. D. Try to catch the attention of the crane operator. The correct answer is C. Question 42. What should you do if you see a dumper being driven too fast? Give one answer. A. Keep out of its way and report it. B. Nothing, as dumpers are allowed to speed. C. Report it to the police. D. Try to catch the dumper and speak to the driver. The correct answer is A. Question 43. You see a lorry parking and it has a flat tire. Why should you tell the driver? Give one answer. A. It could be unsafe to drive the lorry. B. More fuel will be used by the lorry. C. The driver will need to travel at a much slower speed. D. The lorry can only carry small loads. The correct answer is A. Question 44. Which action will help to keep signalers safe? Give one answer. A. Provide body cameras to capture any incidents. B. Provide gloves for hand signals. C. Provide high-vis clothing so they are clearly visible. D. Provide yearly eye tests to confirm they have good vision. The correct answer is C. Question 45. When signalers are used, who should they be in contact with at all times? Give one answer. A. Pedestrians. B. The machine operator. C. The site manager. D. Their supervisor. The correct answer is B. Question 46. Where risk of overturning is significant, what should vehicles be fitted with? Give one answer. A. A winch and pulley system. B. Extra strength brakes. C. Heavy duty graded tires. D. Rollover protective structures, ROPS. The correct answer is D. Question 47. Who should check a ladder before it is used? Give one answer. A. A site safety officer. B. The manufacturer. C. The person who is going to use it. D. The site manager. The correct answer is C. Question 48. What should you do if you need to use a mobile access tower but the brakes don't work? Give one answer. A. Do not use the tower. B. Get someone to hold the tower while you use it. C. Only use the tower if the floor is level. D. Use some wood to wedge the wheels and stop them moving. The correct answer is A. Question 49. Which one of the following is a safe way of moving a mobile access tower? Give one answer. A. Towing with a side vehicle with a tow rope attached to the top. B. Towing with a side vehicle, with a tow rope attached to the base. C. Using manual effort pushing only from the base. D. Using manual effort to pull from the top and the base. The correct answer is C. Question 50. If you are working on a flat roof, what is the best way to stop yourself from falling over the edge? Give one answer. A. Ask someone to watch you and shout when you get too close to the...